Okay, we are recording. So welcome to Team Call. Today is Wednesday, February 26th. So insanely pumped for tonight's Team Call. We have the Josh Coates speaking to us. I had the opportunity to, um, I guess it was probably six or so months ago, maybe even a little bit longer, hear him speak at the Dallas um, Super Weekend event and talk about being able to just light you on fire, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm so excited for tonight's call. But he is obviously the author of a number one best-selling book, which he's going to share a little bit with us um, about with us tonight. He hosts a podcast called Your Push Coach, and he runs um, mastermind trainings for Beachbody coaches specifically. He works with lots of the top coaches in the network um, from a leadership perspective and a masterminding perspective. And so um, he has lots of knowledge that he's going to be sharing with us tonight and talking to us a little bit about his book. So um, I see somebody in the chat. Can everybody hear? Can you guys hear me okay? Can you get a thumbs up? Yeah. Okay, cool. Very cool. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to pass the mic over to Josh. And if you guys have any questions or comments, just be sure to throw them up in the chat um, as we go. Hi, guys. How's it going? Beth, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it so much. It's definitely going to throw me off. All of my this says Lindsay on your box. I intentionally opened up our message threads so that every time I look at you and accidentally start to say Lindsay, I'll look down immediately and fix myself because I'm constantly like looking at names. So guys, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you guys so much for showing up on a Wednesday night. Some of my East Coasters, it's 9 p.m. And I know all of you because beach body coaches like to work out apparently at like four o'clock in the morning. You all go to bed at like 8.30 at night. So thanks for staying up late with me. I promise you won't regret it because we're gonna light your souls on fire tonight. Do I have anybody here that says, Josh, I want so badly to grow this business, to help more people, to be more fulfilled, to fulfill my purpose, my passion, and create a better life for my family. If that's you, show me some jazzies. Can you show me some jazzies? Okay, okay, okay. So here's the thing. It, it, it sounds kind of weird, especially coming from a dude. I don't really care. I work with a, a group full of women. I can't worry too much about sounding goofy, right? So we're all muted because there's like a thousand dogs and a thousand kids in the background throwing up, puking all everybody, whatever. You're all muted, but I am an energy guy. Like I need energy. I'm gonna give you energy. But I need to get back a little something. So if you hear something you're really enjoying, that's really speaking to you, show me some jazz fingers. It's, it's, it's the way we can kind of have a little bit of give and receive. Is that cool? Can you guys do that for me? Okay. So tonight, I'm going to teach you what I call the success formula. And I apologize that I have my glasses on. You can't see your, my eyeballs. I know that makes it a little bit weird. But this is like my seventh call today. And my eyeballs really don't want to see my diva light or my <laughs> UV rays anymore. So I, I'm, I'm trying to protect my eyeballs. So I apologize. You go to Instagram, see what I actually look like if you want later. It's fine. Okay. Tonight, I'm going to teach you the way to get anything you want in your business. We got some people on the call. Maybe you're some new coaches. And you're just trying to figure out, like, how do I get the ball rolling? Okay. I hear all these calls, all this information, all these things. How do I get things rolling? Got some homies on the call. How many emeralds do we got on the call? Show me some jazzies if you're an emerald. And you're like, I'm emerald, but man, I feel like I wanna be diamond so bad and I can't figure out how do I get from here to there. We got other girls on the call. Do I have any premier girls on the call? Show me some jazzies if you were maybe premier last year. Okay. And you're like, yo, I hit two star, three star, four star, whatever. But man, I want to be elite. We got other girls that are elite that say, I want to help other girls be elite. Wherever you're stuck in your business, this equation will apply to you if you just simply apply this equation to this place that you're stuck at right now. Okay. You guys ready to hear it? Okay. I'm going to give it to you. I want you to write them on separate lines, okay? Each word I want you to write on a separate line, okay? So we have consistency plus intensity plus worth plus time. Consistency plus intensity plus worth plus time. We're going to walk through these four things individually to help you understand how you partner all of these things together to get what you really want. You cannot expect one of these things to fix everything if you're not doing the other things. I need you to understand all of them. So we're gonna start with consistency, okay? Next to consistency, I want you to write down 
I must do the right things. Consistency does not mean showing up every day. I want you to imagine this for a second. I want you to imagine someone comes to you and says, hey, homie, I don't know why, but these programs just are not working for me. I purchased the program two years ago and it's still not working for me. And you ask, okay, well, let's ask a couple questions. Okay, I'm gonna be a good coach here. How many days a week are you doing the workouts? Well, you know, some weeks one, some weeks two, other weeks four, you know, it kind of just depends on the week. Oh, okay, that's interesting. How often are you drinking your Shakeology? Well, to be honest, it kind of takes a long time, I mean, to mix almond milk and a scoop of Shakeology and almond butter. It's just so much work. Some days I do it, some days I don't. Okay, well, are you following the nutrition plan? I mean, you know, I read like the first page. But I've had the program for a whole year. Why isn't it working? Is there anybody else on this call that gets really frustrated with humans that say things like that? The program, is, it's just not working for me. I don't know what it is. I just feel a little bit bloated after drinking Shakeology. It's just not working. And you're like, homegirl, the problem is not the program. The problem is you aren't doing the work that the program demanded. Now, here's the thing. I got all kinds of beach body coaches that will get so frustrated with their challengers for not following the program and will go on Instagram and say things like this. If you don't have time, try saying instead, it's not my priority. Anybody ever posted something like that? Same homegirls will show up on a call with Beth or with Lindsay or whoever your upline is and regurgitate the same bull crap that your challengers tell you but about the business. I don't know if anybody heard that, but it got like real quiet there. There were like no jazzies right there, okay? None at all. The same crap that your challengers tell you about their fitness is the same crap you tell us about your business. I've been signed up for a whole year. I've been signed up for two years. I've been signed up for six years. Nobody cares. Nobody cares how long you've been signed up. The only thing that matters is how many days in a row, how many weeks in a row, how many months in a row have you shown up and done the right things. There's these things that your company calls the vital behaviors. Now for me, J Max did not give me a specific business plan, okay? The plan that I went through taught me how to coach people, taught me about leadership, taught me about speaking. I was not taught as heavy on the business building side as you guys were, and I definitely wasn't taught anything about social media. I spent my entire first year of my business just guessing, listening to podcasts, trying anything and everyone that everyone told me to try. None of it is working. Year two, I sat down and I used the life coaching principles that John Maxwell had taught me to come up with a game plan and strategy for my business. And when I was done coming up with that game plan, it was so, so, so simple. It was basically posting on social media every day, talking to humans every single day, because that's the only way I can line up consultations is if I actually talk to people and doing my own personal development, which for me was being a product of the product I was selling. Then I find beach body coaches. Okay, start talking to beach body coaches. My name starts spreading really fast when my very first client goes from two star to seven star in six weeks of working with me. And then everyone wanted to work with me. And I started hearing about these things called the vital behaviors. And I'm going, are you telling me that the thing I failed for an entire year just to learn this little formula? You guys literally had it handed to you on a silver platter called the vital behaviors, which if you just use any common sense at all, the word vitals mean if it's not there, you're dead. And we got a lot of people who think they have businesses, but in reality, the only thing you have is an Instagram page. And guess what? So do your kids. That does not mean you have a business. 
you posting every single day, no matter how many different filter packages you have bought, and no matter how many amazing hip hop professional produced videos you make for your stories, does not mean you have a business. What makes it a business is when you do the vital behaviors because those are the things that breathe life into your business. And without it, your business is dead. Now it's cool. You can still wear the TBB ball cap if you want to. You can still pay to go on the cruise with everyone else if you really want to. And you can go to Summit and you can dance around at the clubs all night and show up, but you don't have a business, okay? You're a member of the fan club. And if that's all you want to be, that's okay. Like, like for real, if that's all you want to be is a member of the fan club, that's okay. But if you want to be a business owner, and I believe you do because you told me at the beginning, you want to grow. You want to have purpose. You want to make a difference. You want to change the world. If that's you and you actually want to be a business owner, then you're going to have to take some ownership for what you do with your time. And I just personally believe having four kids, I had three kids when I first started building the business, I wasn't okay with telling my family, hey, I'm gonna have to make some sacrifices to spend some extra time on this and my laptop to build a business. I wasn't okay with saying those words unless I was actually going and doing what I said, which was using that time and space to build a business. In other words, if I'm gonna tell my kids, hey, daddy needs an hour or two in his office, then I better be using that hour or two to do something that makes their life better, not to go in and play on social media and pretend that I have a business. Some of you can't understand for the life of you why your significant other isn't more supportive about your business. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if they could see that you were doing productive activities, first of all, it would change your confidence level. As my good buddy Micah Folsom says, consistency breeds confidence. Your spouse would start to see you're changing into a new human being. Home girl is happier than she's ever been before. She's more confident than she's ever been before. She's got a purpose. Man, I don't care if you make any money or not. Just keep doing whatever you're doing because whatever you're doing, you're a freaking awesome human being right now. But the other thing is they would begin, thank you, thank you. <laughs> the, the, the husbands are in with that. The other thing is you would actually start to develop some good habits that would lead to actually getting some results and you'd be able to start showing them some paychecks and going, yo, by the way, steak is on me tonight. If you're vegan, awesome potatoes are on me tonight, okay? <laughs> Whatever it is for you, you say, hey, this trip to Disney, by the way, it's not coming out of our savings account and it's not going on a credit card. I got this one. And over time, they start to respect and appreciate you. I had Mick and Melissa McAllister speak at my event last year. And uh, one of the things Mick said, he was like, when Melissa told me she was signing up for a company called Beachbody, the first thing I said was, that's the dumbest name I've ever heard in my life. And I laughed in her face. But the more paychecks she kept bringing home, I didn't have a choice. She was demanding my respect by showing me results. I'm telling you, if you will do the right things on a regular basis, a lot of the problems you're currently having will be fixed. Just like your challengers. If you would actually drink your Shaco and work out every day, a lot of the things you're complaining about would just take care of themselves. So number one is I have to do the right things or nothing else really matters, guys. Nothing else really matters. And you can, you can study the Instagram algorithm for the next 49 years. But if you don't do your vital behaviors, it's not gonna matter. And maybe you do get some extra likes and maybe that makes you feel better about yourself, but it will not give you a business, okay? Number two, intensity. If consistency is doing the right things, intensity is bringing the right energy. 
you have to bring a level of energy that is tangible. Has anyone else on the call noticed the way I demand your attention with my energy? I took a half a scoop of Energize right before I got on the call to make sure even being my sixth or seventh call of the day, whatever it is, I need to have energy because if I don't, nobody pays attention. Guys, we are doing our business in a space, social media, that is very busy. And if you don't bring something extra to the table, nobody's stopping the scroll. Nobody's reading the message. Nobody cares who you are unless you bring something extra. Now, I'm not saying that anybody needs to be an extrovert like me. Okay, now I am one of the most extroverted humans you will ever meet. If you meet me in person, I'm the weirdo that is like so excited to meet everybody. Meanwhile, a lot of Beachbody coaches are like hiding in the corner trying to avoid people. But I'm going to tell you that 90% of the clients I've had, 90% of them were introverts who learned how to bring the right energy. They weren't extroverts, okay? They didn't have to be as loud as me. They didn't have to be as funny or exciting, but they did have to learn how to bring a level of energy. In other words, you have to learn how to communicate the passion and purpose that lives on the inside. Because nobody knows the purpose or passion exists unless you find a way to communicate it. Does that make sense? You guys feel me right now? If people don't feel something from you, I'm listening to this incredible book right now. It's called Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson, who created ClickFunnels, who is kind of like the standard for people who are creating sales funnels. And one of the things he talks about is that no one in the world is a logical buyer. Now, to be fair, a lot of dudes actually are logical purchases, but let's just be real for a second. We're selling to women, okay? The reason I work well in this industry is because I'm a little bit more on the emotional side, if you can't already tell. I'm a little bit wired more like a woman. I don't know how to fix cars or do things, but I do love going shopping, okay? There's a reason I fit into this industry, okay? Now, women are not logical shoppers, okay? We, I'm gonna throw myself into this so I don't sound like I'm stereotyping. We are emotional shoppers. And if the only thing you bring to the table is logic, you ain't going to sell many people. People need to feel something from you. That's why storytelling is so important. Storytelling allows people to go on a journey with you and feel something. But you have to learn to bring a level of energy that people can connect to and people can grab onto. I love what Russell says in the book. He says that we usually, we usually purchase for an emotional reason. We usually buy into the company or the products for an emotional reason. And then after we make the decision, we look for logical things to kind of justify why we did it. In other words, we might get on some type of a sneak peek call and we hear Beth bring fire and passion and energy, and that's why we signed up. But in order to feel better about signing up, we start rambling off all the stats about the company to our husband to try to justify why we made this emotional decision that feels a little irrational, right? And a lot of times what we do when we're trying to sell to people is we forget that we bought in not because of that logical explanation that we later made up. We bought in because of an emotional experience that we had. And if you want to be good at selling, recruiting, or leading, which by the way is all selling, you're either selling to people to buy your products or you're selling to them to sign up for your business or leadership is just simply selling to people that they should also work hard like you do. It's all sales. If you want to be good at sales, you have to get good at getting a hold of people's emotions. And some of you might think that that's a bad thing. It might sound manipulative to you. But for me personally, there are a million people out there trying to manipulate people's emotions to get them to make decisions to go into debt, to get them to make decisions to purchase things they don't need, 
to get them to make purchases that kill their bodies, aka Coca-Cola. I have something good to offer people. I have something that actually helps them to become healthier and change their life. If they're going to use emotions, how much more should I help people tap into their emotions to make, help them make a good decision if everyone else is doing it to make them a bad decision? Do you see what I'm saying? I personally believe that I have a moral and ethical obligation to get people to purchase from me. Because if they don't, I failed them. Think about this for a second, guys. How many of you on this call say, Beachbody legit has changed my life? Show me some of these. How many of you can say, Josh, following my upline on social media did not change my life, even though it inspired me to make changes. What actually changed my life was purchasing and getting put in an accountability group or a challenge group. That's what actually changed my life, correct? Meaning, if people only follow you and only get the free stuff from you, you didn't actually change their life. Now, you may have, might have made them feel a little bit better. You might have gave them a couple goosebumps. You might have inspired them to have a smile on their face today. But you do not change people's lives until you get them to buy into the process that they embrace on a daily basis. John Maxwell calls it the law of process. Leaders are not made in a day. They're made a day at a time. If I fail at getting you to buy into the process, I failed you because I was holding in my hand the thing you needed to change your life and I didn't do what I needed to do to help you make the step you needed to take to change your life. Does that make sense? And number three is worth. I want you to write worth in all caps. I want you to underline it. I put parentheses around it because I want you to understand this, that worth is the only given part of the equation and yet it's the thing we usually give up the quickest now the best way i can help you to understand this is to explain to you that i believe personally we are a three-part being i believe that we are a spirit being okay some people would call it's worth o w o r t h some people might call their spirit, their heart, whatever you call it, doesn't really matter. I, I call it my spirit, okay? I am a spirit. I have a mind and I live in a body, okay? But the true nature of me, who I really am, my eternal being is a spirit, okay? Now, I need you to understand that we have two belief systems working in our life, okay? One is our spirit or our heart. The other is our mind. Now, I'm going to show you real quick how easy it is to find out which voice is your heart and which voice is your head, okay? How many of you have ever thought things like, I don't know if I have what it takes to succeed? Raise your hand. I'll raise seven hands and a couple legs, okay? How many of you ever thought, I don't know if I'm good enough of a leader? Raise your hands. I don't know if I have enough experience. I don't know if... A hundred other things that I've come up with for I don't know if I am worthy or capable, correct? Now, I want to do this simple little exercise with you. I want you to take a second, and I want you to think about this, and then I want you to answer it in the comments over here. Why do you believe you exist on this planet? What is the purpose for your existence? I want you to think about it for just a second, let that soak in, and then I want you to put it in the comments over here so I can see some of your answers. Why do you believe you exist on this planet? What is the purpose of your existence? You personally, by the way. To help others, to bring others happening, happiness, to help women create strong AF bodies and minds, to help people out, to serve, to brighten other people's days, to bring God glory and help others believe in themselves, to serve others, to bring light into other people's lives, to listen to all of these powerful statements, guys, to show people that living can be amazing, to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to be a mother and encourage others to believe in themselves, to empower people. Do you guys hear how amazing this stuff is? 
Now tell me, how in the world people who believe that those things are their reason for existence could possibly have a question like, I don't know if I'm even good enough to do this. I don't know if I'm good enough of a leader. The difference is what you're currently typing up for me is what you truly believe about yourself in your heart. The questions that we have about our worth, about whether we can do this, about we have, do I have the potential? I'm, I don't know. I may not experience. I've never done this before. That's the belief system in your head. Very, 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 very powerful statement that Carl Deichler made one time at a Super Saturday we were both speaking at. He said, our head is always telling us to stop, but our heart is always telling us to go. Notice that all of the limiting beliefs and fears and doubts that we have are always trying to get us to stay put. And yet, if we just take a second and listen to our heart, it always has some powerful statement about the things we're supposed to go and do. Now, here's what I want you to understand. Many of you struggle with your worth. We as humans, we do. We struggle with our worth because we know well, I've done this. I haven't done this. Maybe I don't deserve it. Maybe I'm not worthy of it because I didn't have this or that or this or that. I need you to understand that that is the belief of your head. And if you listen to that voice too much, it will be almost impossible for you to be consistent enough or intense enough to ever see success. If you want to have success in your life, you're going to have to make intentional time and space every single day to align with your true worth that lives in your heart, not in your head. Because in your heart of hearts, every single one of you knows you are here for a reason. You are here for a purpose. There is a difference you're supposed to make in this world. There are people you are supposed to help. And if you allow your head to do all of the talking, it will talk you out of your purpose over and over and over. So I need you. This is why I believe in personal growth so much, guys. I need you to work on yourself just as much, if not more, as you ever work on your business. Now, doesn't mean we abandon our business. Doesn't mean we put our business aside. But what it means, let me give you an example. Some of you are over-obsessing your engagement. Some of you are just going crazy every single day, trying to find the right picture, the right filter, the right caption. And you spend so much time worrying about, is this post going to be good enough? That you never tap into who you really are and how powerful you really are. And the message you could have delivered today that would have literally changed someone's life because you were over obsessed about what kind of a reaction can I get from this? I need you to write this down. I need you to write this down. I have to stop looking to others for the affirmation I should have given myself. I have to stop looking to others for the affirmation I should have given myself. See, when I embrace my worth and I know who I really am, which for me personally comes from my belief in my creator, that's the reason I believe I have a purpose. I believe it was given to me. There's nothing I can do to get rid of that. I'm not powerful enough to change that. This purpose was given to me it is my birthright, and if it is my purpose, I have a responsibility to carry it out. And if that is my worth, I don't need any of you. Now, I love you. I believe in you. I care about you. But I don't need a single one of you to respond for me to realize who I am and what I have to offer. I straight up told myself when I woke up this morning who I was and what I had to offer. I don't need you to confirm that. 
We can get on this call tonight and you guys can give me jazz fingers for an entire hour and you can go tag me in a million posts or you can sit there and give me the nastiest RBF I've ever seen in my life. Either way, I walk away from this call and I'm good because I know I delivered what I was put here to do. You see what I'm saying? Do you see the, how that changes everything? See, when you are constantly looking for everyone else's approval, when you're constantly looking for everyone else's affirmation, first of all, it's draining. It is just absolutely exhausting. But second of all, it never actually gets you where you wanted to go because you are allowing other people to write the terms for your story. And here's where that gets real serious for me, guys. I got four kids that I love more than anything in the world. None of you are more important to me than my kids. Some of you have made your followers, some of you have made your challengers, some of you have made your coaches more important to you than your own children by fighting harder for their acceptance than you're fighting for your children's future. Did somebody catch that? Did somebody catch that just now? Some of you are fighting harder for the approval and the acceptance and the double tap of someone on social media than you are fighting for the future of your children. I spoke in my Push Elite group today about social media strategies. And before I gave them anything that was important to post, I needed to literally pound into their heads that even though engagement is important, and of course we want to grow our engagement, of course we want to get more eyeballs, of course we want more people to see our stuff. If we ever become more obsessed with engagement than we are with our purpose, we lose. We lose. Because what do we even have to offer the world if the only thing we did was starting chasing them around instead of leading them to a place? A leader does not go chasing after other people and living to their principles and values. A leader leads the way and says, these are my principles, these are my values. If you want to align with this, man, I can take you to some amazing places. You can be fulfilled like me. You can be confident like me. You can be happy like me. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, that right there, that internal transformation will sell more challenge packs and will recruit more coaches than any amount of money you could ever make. Nobody cares how much money you made. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, that creates some very quick, tangible things, but it does not create heart connections and lifelong journeys together. That can only be done when we share a common purpose. Does that make sense? So I have to own and embrace who I am and I have to be happy with that. I have to wake up every single day and thank God that this is who I am. I don't need to look like her. I don't need to sound like her. I don't need to be like her. I need to be the best version of me. In fact, that's one of my favorite affirmations that I've created for myself and it's the next book that I'm working on. My favorite affirmation, I just simply say, if I feel like I'm getting stressed because there's something that isn't working as well as I wanted it to, if I feel like I'm stressed because somebody else is doing something that's working better than me, all I do is I just stop myself and I say, the best version of me will figure it out. I don't need to figure out how to be the next version of you when the best version of me is always an option. I don't wanna be the next version of you you already got that nailed down. I need to be the best version of me. And what that constantly does is it constantly causes me to go inward to seek approval instead of going outward to seek approval. And as a result, I'm happy, I'm confident, and that's what sells more than anything else in the world. So here's the thing. If I can do the right things with the right energy 
and do it because I understand my own worth, not because I'm seeking the approval from someone else. If I can do those three things for enough time, give me three to six months and you can transform any area of your business. If you say, yeah, actually I do want to fix my engagement. Awesome. You want to, you want to get better engagement? Do the right things every single day. Follow a simple strategy. Bring the right intensity every single day and own your worth. Stop measuring your worth based off of the likes and just say, I am worthy, so that's why I show up and do this. You do that for three to six months, I promise you your engagement will grow. If you're someone on here that struggles to hit success club, if I have anybody struggling to hit success club, okay, what does that mean? It means that you're struggling to sell to people what you have to offer, right? Here's what I need you to do. I need you to say, for the next six months, okay, I'm going to focus on doing the right things it, do, it takes to actually make those sales. What does that mean? It means I'm going to talk about my own transformation, and it means I'm going to ask people to join my challenge group, okay? I'm going to do that. If I will do that with the right level of intensity, meaning I bring excitement, and I bring passion, and I bring purpose to it, if I'll do those things and own and embrace my own worth, for the next six months, I can promise you hitting Success Club will not be a problem. I see my homegirl, Megan Geese, on here, currently signed on as Lindsay Matway. Homegirl joined my groups like three years ago, and she learned this concept. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't follow her on social media, you should, because your life will literally be better just by reading her posts. Because her energy is off the charts. You can't get around this girl for two minutes and not have your life changed. When people can sense that about you, when people can feel that about you, you don't have to convince anybody to join you. They start joining you because they want to have whatever it is you have. And if that means they need to drink Shakeology, they'll drink Shakeology. If that means they got to spend $140, they'll spend $140. They don't care. None of that matters any the package no longer matters when the transformation is evident rob pearson on the national wake up call said a couple months ago he said if you increase if you improve your results you'll improve your invites meaning if you show people something that is tangible if you can show them a better transformation your invites will be a lot easier than they used to be because people are excited to talk to you if you're struggling to recruit, my homies that are trying to get from Emerald to Diamond or from Diamond and beyond, whatever that is, if you need to recruit, here's what you need to do. Do the right things. Ask yourself, what are the right things I need to do to recruit? Well, A, I got to start talking about this business a little more often instead of just taking sweaty selfies. Two, I got to ask people if they want to join my team, right? That's the right things. Two, I bring the intensity factor to it. I got to bring as much passion into talking about the business as I do talking about the products. And then three, I have to own my own worth. I cannot question my own worth when I'm recruited. Do I really have what it takes to lead them? Can I help them? Oh my God, am I a fake? Am I a phony? Blah, 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 blah. No, I'm not a fake. I'm not a phony. I am powerful because I was put here for a reason to serve God's purpose he has for me by helping others and being genuine to bring the GD sunshine to help and uplift others to change lives to empower people all that stuff you said over here that's the real you and if you can own and embrace that at every level of your business you will just keep growing and you will just keep blossoming the only time you'll ever get stuck is if instead of listening to that voice of purpose, you start listening to this voice of doubt. Remember that doubt was not put there to serve you unless you are still living in caveman era where you don't have Google and there are saber tooth tigers. We live in a day and age where we no longer really need fight or flight. And most of the time that you want to run away, you need to stop, you need to collect yourself, and you need to ask yourself, would my heart ask me to stop or go in this situation? Is this my head 
or is this my heart? And I can promise you, if there's something wanting you to stop, take a break, that's not usually your heart. It's very, very rare that your heart is asking you to take a break from your purpose. And I want you to understand that. I want to just kind of close with this concept that this for me personally, because my business serves others and helps others, including my family. To me, my business isn't a career choice. My business is my purpose. Calling it a business makes it a little bit easier to say things like, I think I need to take a break. I think I need to take a step back. When you actually realize that it's your purpose, see how much dumber you sound when you say, mm, I think I need, to, I need to take a step back from my purpose. No one would even say that, right? You would know right away that, oh, I can't say it like that. People are gonna think I'm, people are gonna think I'm a jerk, right? Remember, this thing, if it changes other people's lives, it's not just a career choice. This is a purpose. The reason you were put here was to do those things you said over in the chat thread. And if Beachbody is acting as a tool to help you do those things, you're in the right freaking place. You are in the right place. The one thing I want to encourage you to do is stop seeing Beachbody as a box that you're stuck in and start seeing it as an umbrella that you're protected by. Beachbody has given you an umbrella of protection to serve and fulfill that purpose that came from your heart. Does that make sense? Guys, thank you so much for having me tonight. The only shameless plug that I wanted to throw on at the end is that my number one best selling book, F Leadership, is currently free if you go to joshcoats.com. Basically, if you just pay $6.99 for shipping, you can get my book totally free. Okay. That's the only thing I wanted to plug tonight was something that I'm actually giving you for free. So go to joshcoats.com, just pay for shipping, and I'm going to send you a totally free copy of my book. Beth, I'm going to hand it back over to you. Um, I have some extra time if you want to do any Q&A. If you guys need to call it a night, that's fine too. Whatever works good for you, Beth. This was amazing. Like I have, I have no words and I feel like I always have words. Um, so many notes. I, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to like unmute yourself really quick or throw something up in the chat. I personally don't have any. I just wanted to thank you for taking time out of your night to share with us. And I, I want to encourage everybody to just take action with the four things that, that Josh just, just shared with us. Like we, we get off of these calls and we're so fired up and you know, we have all these feels and we can't go to sleep at night and you know, we're like all in our feels. And then but it's in those moments where we actually take action and, and put to use the things, like the knowledge that Josh just shared with us tonight. And so I just wanna encourage each and every one of you to go out and do all of the things and live your purpose in these ways. Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't see any questions. So cool. I guess we'll go ahead and wrap up. Josh, thank you so much um, for everything. I got my book earlier today. I'm hey, cool. excited. I can't <laughs> wait to check it out. Um, and I guess we'll close with that. So thanks guys. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you.